Lila again. I'm sorry this is my seventh voicemail, and I'm sorry for all the screaming on the third and fifth ones, but I was just wondering, did you think our meeting at five at the park for our date was a suggestion? Because I totally meant it as a solid plan, and anyways, it's um, 5.43 now, and I'm getting really hungry, so if you want to stop by, feel free. Okay, um, I love you. I know you don't love me back. You made that perfectly clear in that Valentine's Day card, but I love you. Okay, bye. All right, everyone, let's get this party pop, pop, pop in. What's our scenario for the day? Are my eyes playing cruel and beautiful tricks on me? Or is that Lila Stevens? Clearly pretending that she doesn't notice me on that bench. Hi, Felix. Well, hey there, Delilah. Oh, free work legs. Yeah. 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 So, Lila Loops, what brings you to the bench? For the big announcement for our meeting, you decided to show up. What? You mean there's actually an organization behind you dressing like this? Of course. We're the Lincoln High LARP Club. LARP means live action role play. Meaning we come up with our own characters in our own settings and act everything out as our characters would. And guess what? It's friggin' sweet. Guys, guys, Lila can tell a cool thing from a stupid thing. Oh, yes. Yes, I can. So come on, Lila, we'll bring you to the park. Um, I'm waiting for someone. Someone who? Someone. I bet it's her boyfriend. Who, Kyle? No, she's dating Jack. Who can't keep up anymore? I mean, this girl gets around. <laughs> Guys, lay off Lady Lila. She's dating Brock. Oh, Brock, I hate that kid. Brock isn't even a real name. Uh, yes, it is. Oh, yeah, what's it mean? It means rock with the letter B in front of it. <laughs> Seriously, guys, quit hating on Lila. She can date who she wants to date. Caleb, cut the cute stuff. We got a mean naked. Right, so I think today we agreed we'd be in the kingdom of Nightingale. Yep. yep. Great. I'll be Ardwarf, king of Nightingale. Ellie, you'll be Iris, revolutionary peasant. Oh, kill me! Ted, your dear heart, famous knight. And, um. Lady Lila! Would you like to be Queen Penelope? <gasps> Not at all. Oh, come on! We've never had a girl in the club to play her. Hey! What? Guys, Brock will be here any minute. Well, what time is he supposed to get here? Five. I think that already happened. I know that. And why can't you play with us? Are you too cool? No. Of course he's not. He's the one who got stood up. <laughs> okay, everybody. Love and LARP, love and LARP. There's no hating here. Fine. I will be your... Queen. Do you even know how to LARP? It can't be that difficult if you can do it. <laughs> now, my first order of business is to strip ten of his men. <gasps> what? You can't do that on what ground? Are you questioning my authority? Yes, yes, I am. I'll have you beheaded. You can't do that. She can't do she can't do that. She's queen, but you're king. <laughs> king Ardarf believes women should they use equal ruling power. Time to change and great. Now my next order of business is to appoint Iris to knighthood. Oh, pinch me, I'm dreaming. Nope, it's all real. Well, sort of. Ugh, this is why we never let girls in the club before. Hey! No, you never let girls in the club before because no girl wants to be in the club. I have been in this club for two years. These are rats. Not back deposits. <laughs> no, we didn't let like girls in the club before, because girls always need help. You're a prime example of a girl who can't do anything without a kitchen. You sound like Brock. Um, I mean, like you guys have the same voice tone. Does Brock boss you around a lot? Yes. Is this the first time he stood you up? No. Is he the reason you're a crazy dictator queen when it comes to punishing men? Probably, and because you're an a-hole. 
Did you know it is a punishable offense to stand a girl up in the kingdom of Nightingale? Sure. It's true. I believe it goes against the Anti-Douchebag Act of 1543. <laughs> I believe you, Queen Penelope, enacted it. You also made a child abuse to give your children idiotic names. And then you declared that nerds who are too into LARP must spend 30 minutes a day outside socializing instead of on their computers or playing Battlestar Galactica. Hmm. Hey, then the personal attack. It's an intervention. It'll be good for you, I promise. I know. <laughs> well, in that case, I sentenced the dunce Brock to 50 years in prison, mm -hmm. one year for every minute of his tardiness, and to his parents, Lady Rita and Sir Jeff, I sentenced them to a trip to ye old Hallmark to find a scroll of baby names to name their son something less stupid. Here, here. And to the peasant Ted, I mean, dear heart, although you clearly need to see the sun more, I'll have mercy on you. I sentence you to actually get to know a girl and talk to her. You might find she's less helpless than you assume. How am I supposed to find a girl to hang out with? Seriously, I promise you all I have a vagina. <laughs> Ellie would be fine. Hmm. I've always viewed you as kind of gender neutral. You really are an a-hole. Well, I must say, Queen Penelope is getting more work done in this kingdom that has been done in seven meetings. Normally we just run around and poke each other with lightsabers. You're really good at this, Lila. You think? Yeah. You're kind of a badass. No one's ever said that to me before. <laughs> Gentlemen, do I need to tie a big girl balloon to my wrist or something? Don't worry, Ellie. I know you're a girl. <gasps> Sorry about all those boy jokes, babe. Sometimes you gotta hurt them to get them hooked. James? Oh, dear God, Dan. Sorry, I forgot you a little spastic. Shut up. Sparklips? Hmm? Oh, yeah, because, well, you know. Yeah. You know, I can't believe she didn't let us shoot off those fireworks. Hmm? Adam's mom didn't let us shoot off the fireworks. Adam always, whenever we joked about death, that's all he ever asked for his funeral, that we shoot off some great illegal fireworks. And that there'd be a craggy cloud. <laughs> yeah. 
all she wanted and she denied him of it. Like, what the hell? Where does she get off doing that? Where does she get that right? Um, maybe because she's his mom? So? I was his girlfriend. You were his best friend. It was Adam's wish for his own f funeral. Well, I don't think any of us could have shot them off anyway, Jane. I could have. No, you couldn't. Yes, I could. But I should have tried. I think you could have done it. You were a good friend. Not really. What's that? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing. I don't think so. Orange? Um, yeah. Damn, I don't think I can eat in the graveyard. He always wanted us to have a picnic in this grave, too. He said, instead of crying or something, just throw a picnic. Grab some frisbees, climb a tree. Except for Jane, because the cuts of fall. I punched him for that. Yeah, I know. Okay, I got a better one. We have to at least chuckle this time. Shoot. Okay, um, remember a couple years back when we were at that Christmas walk thing? Um, it was couples only, but I was just tagging along because I got no other friends besides the two of you. <laughs> Don't say it like that. He was your friend before he was mine. Whatever, you were his girlfriend, so it doesn't matter who came first. Remember you guys were sort of new today? Yeah, freshman year. Right, um, you guys were walking sort of back to back, but not quite, um, with your arms swinging back and forth? <laughs> oh, God. Wait, wait till I finish. Okay, so, remember, your hands just touched and you automatically held hands like the don't be couple you are? <laughs> I thought it was so romantic. My head started to spin and I got that fuzzy feeling. And so he goes, did you feel that? And you go, yes, yes I did, thinking he was talking about the, all the ooey gooey romance and whatnot. <laughs> and then he goes, Dang, you felt that? That was a pretty powerful <laughs> fart. <laughs> God, he made me feel like such an idiot. It was our first date, too. And you were actually hoping he'd be romantic. <laughs> I was so mad at him. And then you two dorks just kept on doing that stupidly long and complex handshake like you were 12. We planned it out so awesome in our heads, and he fell for it. <laughs> I can't believe you stopped talking to him, though. I did stop talking to him, didn't I? Yeah, for like two weeks you were so mad at me. You had to bring me all the flowers and stuff I wouldn't accept from him. When you came to my door, I thought you were going to ask me out. Yeah, weird. Aw, I feel kind of bad always dragging you into our relationship like a third wheel. No, I do. Why didn't you ever get a girlfriend? I just didn't. Have it yet? <laughs> well, why not? I mean, you're good looking, you're nice. You probably don't ruin romantic moments with your farts. <laughs> I mean, do you like a girl? Yeah, I do. <laughs> well then, what's up with you and her not going out? I just can't, Jane. <sighs> well, why not? I mean, maybe not now with Adam, I guess, but but one day... Well, Jane, stop with all your gooey-ooey romantic crap. <sighs> I can't go out with her, ever. Is she ugly? No. Is she foreign? What? No. Is she a lesbian? Jane, stop. Is she a man and you're gay? I can't do this here. Dan, no, please. Please, don't leave me here alone. I'm just, I'm tired of all the secrets. All right, weirdo, but you gotta promise to stop asking me about it. Why do you want to know so bad? We're sitting in a graveyard and Adam's dead. Jane, what does that have to do with anything? You know, just calm down. Don't you dare say what you're about to say to me. Look, Dan, I'm just asking for normalcy. I'd much rather get out all these stupid secrets we have than talk about Adam like it's fixing something. So why can't you just play along and tell me? Because it's you! Don't look at me like that. I, I know I'm a terrible person. Back then, me and Adam, we fell for you. We both did, and y you know, then it was fair. It's just two guys in a friendly game of love and war, but now it's not the same anymore. Oh, he's dead, and I still have these feelings, but these feelings are wrong, so. Well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I was a bad friend. Yeah. No, you don't have to say anything. This is the only good thing that I've that stupid drunk girl over this, huh? Me saying all the things I got in my head. I feel like such I a... let him down too, Dan. So don't think. You're not alone, okay? And if he was still alive, he probably stood a good chance against him. Dan, what are you saying? 
Me and Adam were a crack couple. Jane, what are you talking about? No, you and Adam were a great couple. He thought you were the prettiest, funniest, smartest girl. The girl in the car with him the night of the accident is the girl he was cheating on me with. Cheating? J Jane, what are you saying? You're not the jealous type. You know, he was just driving to some- She told me. Who? The girl in the car with him the night of the accident. She told me. She lived? <laughs> the alcoholics always live. Well, I don't know about that, but Jane, don't you think she was some sort of like Adam's crazy- Adam's sister found his journal. He was into journaling? I know. I never even knew. So that's how I know. I know me and him were a crack couple. Don't get me wrong, Dan. I, I loved him, of course, but we just didn't know how to love each other right. I thought that one day, after we'd broken up for the last time, that I'd catch him in a bar and we'd talk about how crappy of a couple we were, but we can't. Instead, he died. He died in a car with another girl by his side while he took his last breath, and God damn, as, as crappy as the couples we were, I'd give anything for that to have been me. I didn't want this to end. I didn't want him to cheat. I didn't want him to die. <laughs> Come on, Jane. What? We owe him at least this much. Ready? Ready. For Adam. For Adam. either a trauma victim or a metaphor for the human condition. What? I thought he... Oh! Ugh. Okay, okay. Well, I took this playwriting class, right? Thinking, hey, I can tell stories, I can write a play. I didn't think it'd be this freaking hard. Wait, <laughs> Monica, calm down. I really thought it was good. I just didn't understand the... Oh. What's this box for? It's a requirements project. Sorry? It's the requirements for the project. It has to involve a bench in a box. I like, I have no idea. I thought maybe setting it up might help. Like, it might give me ideas. I just don't know. I don't know. I like what you wrote already. It's about time travel. That's the secret. Oh! See, that's the reaction I want, but if I have to explain it, it's just not good enough. No, that's so cool. No, it's stupid. How did I get time travel from a bench in a box? So, what were you writing about this time around? Uh, well, it involves these tigers, and uh, this one's awful, too. Okay, okay, so the first play I wrote was about this princess in a tower, and there was this imaginary prince, only you don't know he's imaginary, and, and it was just really weird and out there, and, and the prompt was just write something, and my mind immediately went to imaginary princes who aren't actually imaginary, who actually are, but actually aren't. <laughs> What's wrong with you? No. But I mean, if it's a good play, right? Uh, no, but see, that's my problem. I have like a thousand pretty good, even though they're completely weird ideas. My execution's just really bad and cryptic at times. So how do you know if the execution's good? Well, you have to start out with some exposition. Like, if this was a, a play, I'd be like, Hello, my good friend Paul. I am Monica. You're also a very good friend. <laughs> okay, then what? Well, then you need some conflict. Like, the stakes have to rise. Like, if a meteor flew out of the sky right now and hit you and you were badly wounded and I had to save your life. Okay. Sorry, I gotta think inside the box. <laughs> It's funny because... Box. That's terrible. Yeah, I know. Well, okay, I will have to, like, incorporate the box. Like, if this 
was a scene and a meteor did fly out of the sky and hit you, I could pull like a magical first aid kit out of the box. Or there could be a doctor in the box. Thinking inside the box. Well, technically the doctor would be inside the box. No. Yeah. So, how are you going to set it on a bench? Well, I thought, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't really know anything at this point. This one's terrible, too. <laughs> Wait, stop. Just let me read it first, at least. No, I don't think so. Come on. Wait, no, Paul, it's really bad. Come on. I'll burn your eyes. Wait, stop. Veronica, scene opens in New York City. Veronica's wearing a blue dress and Saul's blazer. Crying. I'll take it back. Just let me read it. George enters stage right. Wow, you didn't even change his name. He's been looking for her. George. Monica. Are you okay? Veronica. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm fine. George. No, you're not. What's going on? Veronica. I don't want to talk about it. George. Come on. Veronica. I'm just tired. George. Monica. Veronica. No, George. George. Monica, you know you can tell me anything. Veronica. Nope. Monica, it's me. Yeah, I know. I just... No. Do you remember in, what was it, the fifth grade, when we went to the Museum of Natural History? Oh, I know where this is going. And do you remember that you almost started crying because you were scared of all the I animals? wasn't scared, I was sad, it was sad. Okay, well, no one else noticed, but I just took your hand and I told you to close your eyes and I pulled you through it. That was kind of the cutest thing ever. See, you can trust me. No, that was different, we were like five. No, it's not different, it's the same. Look, you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but I, I want to help you, okay? And I promise, I won't tell anyone, not even Paul. I mean, of course not, Paul. I just, I, I just want to help you, okay? Okay. Um, okay, I just, I feel like I don't know him anymore. Like. Like, he came over to my house tonight, and we went to Caitlin's house for pictures, and and we get to the dance, and I see his weird friends. Yeah, and they give him something, and I don't know what it is, but he, like, started acting all crazy and weird, and, and he looked at me. Like, he was looking at me, but not, and it scared me. It scared me, George. <laughs> I don't else to explain it. I just, just, if whatever it was that was looking at me through his eyes was there all along, then how did I ever feel like I knew him at all? Yeah. <sighs> Long beat. I'm sorry, Monica. I don't want to read this anymore. You told me once you wanted me to tell you how it happened. I don't know I want to, but... I can't. I can't read this and feel him judging me. Like, this is the man who still the love of my life. Paul, shut up. I'm sorry, Monica. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have shown you this. No, you, you didn't mean to. I mean, I kind of did. I wanted you to see this, but I kind of didn't. Yeah. I thought you said they were talking about tigers or something. They are. George reaches over and pulls a lock of hair out of her eyes. God, do you hate me? Something, 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 then, oh, tigers. <laughs> yeah, tigers, they're kind of my favorite animal. That may be the best story I've ever heard. I know, right? Wait, wait, come here. Do you see that constellation? That one, right there. That one? Yeah. Back in ancient Chinese culture, they thought that was a tiger. Oh, yeah. I remember my dad showing that to me when I was little. I didn't know it was from China, though. Yeah? But I do know that in some cultures, they have these myths about tigers that save people from dragons. It usually has to do with these young women who don't quite know what they're doing, and then they find themselves in a rough spot with a dragon. And 
Veronica kisses him. Monica, I thought you said he kissed you. Monica, what about Paul? I didn't mean to. No, I'm sorry. I, I can't believe you. I love you. What? What? I love you, Monica. George, I... I, I I'm sorry. Uh, I, I should go. Um, will you, will you be all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine. You should go. Wait, no, George? Yeah? Do you think that you want, I mean... I'll call you. I'll call you, okay? I'm sorry, Paul. Well, I kind of hate you right now. I know. And I love you. No. How's it that after? How could he come and I just? I know. Kinda hate this. Well, I hated you. Wow, thanks. I did, and I loved you, and I didn't know what to do. Oh come on! You hooked up with George Thornton wearing my blazer. I mean, you broke my heart when you started dating him. Never should have shown. What's in the box? No. Monica, what's in the box? Wait, no. Monica, what's stop. In the box? Stop. Get back. It's us. Paul, stop. Get back. <laughs> What the hell are you trying to pull here, Monica? You bring all the stuff, you take it here, and you tell me you just want someone to read your scene for playwriting, and then you dump this all on me? I mean, what the hell are you trying to do? What are you trying to I say? I show you what was in the box. Yes, you did, Monica. Yes, you did. Why would you bring me here if you didn't? Just because I doesn't mean I don't know who you are. I know you, Monica. Monica Lydia Wilson, I know you. I know you like steak and you well. I know you can't sleep during thunderstorms. I know that your room is covered in bunny rabbits and you're excited. I know that you hate your mom's nick noodles, but you just eat them anyway because that's just the kind of person you are. You can't actually tell anyone anything! I didn't mean to show me what was in the box! And I know that you meant to show me all that, but you didn't have the guts to actually do it. And I know that you're trying to resolve the past or whatever, but no. Sometimes stuff just gets screwed up, and sometimes you just screw stuff up. Yes, you, with your innocent way of never owning up to anything, and still I loved you for it. And, and I just screwed up, and we both just screwed up. Yes, yes, we both just screwed up. Yes, you hurt me. You killed me. Well, that's not fair. Well, I killed you too. Well, you got that damn right. Shut up. Can you just leave me alone? Yes, yes, I can just leave you alone, but I don't want to because I care about you. <coughs> don't try to pull that on me. You don't care about me, you don't. And I understand why, and I get it. But don't bring me to a park in the middle of the week when I'm doing just fine about it. Shove this in my face. Paul, shut up. Monica, why don't you shut because up? You're being an asshole. You cheated on me. Why did we date? Riddle me that, okay? Why did we date if all it brought us was this heartbreak? I asked myself the same thing. Wait, wait, Monica, stop, Monica, stop! Why? Why, Paul? Because it happens. And it's not sure, I mean, you and I are... But it happens. I mean, look at this picture. It's a Philharmonic. It's just broken now. Yeah. But that's, that's why I don't want to talk about it. Because it breaks all these things, everything we lost. And someday, I'm not sure we'll be able to look back at it and say, that's what we had. Yeah. So you want to get rid of it? That's it? You just, you just want to forget this ever? I don't understand. I don't want it to be there. I don't want this pain to be there anymore. I don't want to look at it. I don't want it to be there. This pain. <laughs> That's why it was so special. I mean, we didn't have all this awesome stuff. Oh, stop! Had. Just go home!
been on Makeout Mountain for a while now, and uh, we haven't made out. Wouldn't you rather sit here and talk? We could play the question game. Oh, yeah, sounds like a typical night on Makeout Mountain. <laughs> Talking. I'll go first. Jamie said you were in band. What other things do you like to do? Watch movies, listen to music, play video games, work out, make out. Yeah, I love video games too, especially Frogger. It's hands down the best. Yeah. Jimmy, I've been out of the dating world for a while, so this is kind of new to me, especially since we started talking through a blind date. This is only our third date and I just- Just what? Just don't think I'm what you're looking for right now. Bedelia, you're fine. You're what I'm looking for. You're a female, you're pretty, fun. When you're not all insecure, you're great. Just confusing as hell. Oh, gee, thanks. I think it's my turn to ask you a question. Okay. I hate to sound mean, but why are you such a tease? One minute you're all over me like you're gonna pounce and the next you're a deer in headlights, sitting as far away from you as, me as you possibly can. like. I have a plague or something. Sorry. I'm not trying to be mean. I just, I don't know what the hell you want from me. I'm getting mixed signals. I can be the guy who just sits here and talks, but not if you're going to throw yourself at me and then pull away before anything can happen. It's fine. You can just take me back to my house now. Ugh, and then you turn around and do this on me. Just answer my question. Fine, you want an answer? Here it is. I've been too hot and ready for every guy that I've had an interest in. I give them what they want and they leave me. Every time. On top of that, they make me out to be some sort of stalker whenever I try to contact them. Which is like once, if they haven't contacted me in a week. If they're not interested, I don't push it. It has happened too often, and it has hurt too much. After months of staying away from dating, my best friend sets me up with some guy she's known forever, and everything starts out good. It always does. Then the next thing you know, you're sitting next to a creepy guy on a creepy mountain in the middle of nowhere. You didn't know you were going to the mountain. You thought you guys were gonna do something normal. Like, I don't know, see a movie, get some ice cream, not go to make out mountain on the third date. I thought we were different, but obviously you're the same. <laughs> so, uh, do you wanna make out? Ah, oh, screw it! My little Jimmy found a girlfriend. Oh, well, don't be rude, Jimmy. Introduce us. <laughs> Bedelia, this is my mother, Joan Peterson. Mom, this is Bedelia. Why, she's a little skinny and underdeveloped, but and a little tired looking, but she seems like a keeper. You did good, Sonny. Ma, she can still hear you. Have you been back here this whole time? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that my little man was safe. Especially since he took one of the cars without asking. And I brought cookies! Yeah, I think it's time to take me home. Oh, I can see I've made this very awkward. Well, I guess I'll just leave you two lovebirds alone. No! no! Just before the kids would head home. 
She'd look at me sternly, and I'd see the clear blue glint of her eyes, as crisp as the crunch of grass beneath our feet. And without a moment of hesitation, she'd pat me swiftly on the shoulder and say, Keep your head up, kid. Keep your head up. So we ended the stage of turmoil, of starving children lining the streets, and of race riots, and of civil decency, the perspective of this martyred hero. <sighs> Keep your head up, kid. Keep your head up. Rest in peace, Emily Jones. Um, how are you doing, Orbiter? Fine. I know this must be hard on you. Yeah, fine. Do you need to talk? I'm okay. Nothing's wrong. I'm always here. You need to talk to me. Your eyes are red, see? Yeah. Yeah, they are. It wasn't supposed to be this way. I thought you'd stopped. Stopped what? You know, doing bad things. Like what? What bad things? Hey, Norbert, can we not talk about this right now? Here, I'll go give you something to drink. Okay. Do you want something out of the icebox? A uh, bottle of Coke? Sure, doll. School's been going all right? Yeah, swell. Real swell. Wouldn't want to be seen with a troublemaker. <laughs> oh, was that a threat? Real nice. Was that a threat? <laughs> Turn blue. Hey, uh, how's your baby sister doing? <laughs> Why do you want to know about her? Just interested is all. Heard she had that sort of thing. What was it? The comic books? Yeah. Heard from your mom she got in trouble for that sort of thing. <laughs> so what? She brought a few of those stupid cartoons to school and her teachers threw a fit. Why do you care? Just thought it would be cool if she's into that sort of stuff. Listen, my sister's a real dip. Don't bother trying to coerce her into hanging out with you and the boys or whatever. Hey, if you say so. It's just, I had a few extra from cleaning out the house, and I wanted to know if she wanted to have this. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. But, um, let's sit down, all right? Oh, man, I really should start studying for that history exam we have coming up. Uh, isn't Mr. Barnes the worst? Always droning on and nagging at you to listen. Get your head out of the clouds, Miss Jones, or I'll write you a detention. Real geezer. I don't know. I think he's kind of cool. Well, you're so smart and all. Hey, uh, how's your other sister doing? Uh, Peabody? Yeah, what's she up to? I don't know. Chess club newspaper? Sure, but she's getting along well as far as you know. I don't really check up. It's not my business. She's doing all right. Yeah. Swell. Keen. So, um... History. Right. Oh, man. I am such a lame brain when it comes to the Romans. I couldn't tell a Byzantine emperor apart from a fish stick. What's your take? What? I said, what's your take? Gee, you all right in there? Hello? Oh, yeah. I don't know. You don't know. Well, I guess you it's sort probably of... should know, seeing as we have a test on it in three days. Your stance, at least, have some idea of what information is familiar to you. Yeah. Don't just agree with what I'm saying, kid. We have a test on this in three days. Sorry, I've been distracted. I never understand teenage girls. Yeah. Haha. Ha. Huh. I've been. Thinking about you a lot. Emily. I really like you. Emily, of course you do, Dollface. We're mean, dating. I, I mean. really like you. Hey, Pete. Yeah? How did they say she died? What happened? How come you wouldn't tell her? Listen, Ed, it's really it's just. Not by Pete. Come on. I can handle major words. I'll do anything. Prescription. Pills. Is that bad? Yes. I think that's very, very bad. You reading comics again? Yes. Listen, I know you really like those comics, but It'd make mom and dad really happy right now if you put them away for a moment. 
Okay, kiddo? Just for a moment, all right? Don't ignore me. Look, I know this is tough on you. It really is on all of us, okay? Especially mom and dad. They're having a really hard time with this. Emily was a member of this family. Could you at least show a little respect? Could you at least think about it? I am thinking about it. I'm thinking about it a whole lot. Okay, really? You've always got your nose buried deep in those stupid comics and doubt you even noticed. Did you even know who she was? She's your sister. Ever met her? Come on, Orbiter. Mom and Dad. I did know her. Put the stupid comic book down. Just let it breathe, Lance. It's has to stop. It's just... Why us? Why us have to deal with this? Don't be such a brat. Don't give that back to her. Orbiter, put it down. Orbiter Jones is the invisible girl. Orbiter Jones doesn't have to listen to anybody. Orbiter? Your super strength is worthless against me, traitor! The infamous Lance Jones is the strongest of the strong until one fateful day he looked into the great light of the abyss and saw inside of himself his own potential for mutiny, rebelling against all who stood for justice in his own pursuit of self-fulfillment. Here, Orbiter. Quick, Pete, use your time jobs and so his movements. Orbiter, can't. Why not? Can't we please just let her have this moment one more time? I'll help you, Orbiter. Edmund, help me transform. Edmund? Edmund. All right, you got it, girl. Transforming now. Roar, I'm a dinosaur! Not in the funeral home, Edmund. Keep your head up, kid! Hey, can I ask you something? Sure. How's your brother doing? <laughs> Which one? <laughs> Sheesh, how many siblings do you have? <laughs> Only four. You've been my boyfriend for how long? Two months? Hey, that's not long enough to get to know a family. Which brother are you talking about? I don't know. I don't remember his name. Older or younger? Older. Lance? Yeah, Lance. He's certainly something, isn't he? What's he up to? Why do you care? Just concerned. He's... Fine. Captain of the basketball team. Two years in a row. Everything's great. whoop de doo And your other brother? Edmund? He's fine. Getting along with a lot of friends. Those weirdy types. Sorry, but he's not... he's not a queer, is he? No. No! It's something... Good. No. Great. Davy. Great, great, great. Davy. It's just Skippy, you Davey. know? Davy! Is something wrong? No, kitten. I just wanted to... It's some... Because this is really getting weird. Is something wrong? Something wrong? Yeah, you've got this look on your face. Like, I don't know. You don't want to be here. Do you not want to be here? Davy? Keep your head up, Kate! Keep your head up! Order, you're making a mess of everything. You know, I ought to slap you, you annoying little twig. Do you know where we are? Do you know where we are? Searching desperately for a hiding hole while using her superpowers of invisibility, the amazing Orbiter Jones vanishes into thin air! The villain is stupefied and cannot see where she has gone. Where is she? Just stop it, Orbiter. Nobody's playing this stupid game of yours. For God's sakes, grow up! But he breaks through and sees her disguise! And he grabs her by the stroke of the neck and holds her, peering down at those beady glass balls of lungs just a breath away. The stroke of the teeth of the beast looking in. Damn it, Orbiter! Just stop it! Stop it, Orbiter! No one thinks this is cute or funny! Your teachers hate you at school! I've heard from mom and dad! Do you know how mad they are? How anxious and upset they are that their daughter is a little nut job! Show her sister all the crops and glory! Orbiter! Listen to me! Well, she can say it. Don't kill me! God. Sorry, didn't mean to. Please don't kill me. I'm not going to kill you. I'd never hurt you, Emily. Don't kill me. You've got the mess. What? Listen, oh, Emily. We are not having this conversation again. I've told you a thousand times we are not having this conversation again. You're a scrub, Emily. I am not. Listen, Emily, Mr. Barnett told me to talk to you. He said, listen, kid, Emily's grades are going way down. And I mean, look at you. You barely show up to school anymore. And when you do, your eyes are this unsettling yellow-red, and you're in this sort of haze. And when I look at you, it's like you're not all there. You don't understand. 
I do, Dollface. I really do. What is it that you understand? Because from my understanding, your only life is doing your stupid history for your stupid Mr. Barnett. And then what? Reading the newspaper, huh? Counting sheep, huh? Just rinse and repeat, right? Seven hours a day, five days a week. My studies are important to me, Emily. I don't care! I need something to hold on to. I need some sort of life to hang on to. A story, a little piece of imagination just to know that I'm not dead. I'm not dead yet, am I? Oh, God. I'm not dead. Emily, this isn't going to work. I don't need you. I don't need this. I don't... One day I'll be up there with those vaudeville girls and the skirts and the dresses and oh, I'll be living. I'll have a real life then. I still have to pinch the life into my face every morning. I have to grab the throbbing cold bits of flesh and pinch them just to know that I'm still alive. You don't get it. You just don't. We're done, Emily. I just can't get myself involved with you, you know? I just can't risk it. But promise me one thing. Take care of your siblings for me. Lance and Edmund and even that wet smack of yours, Peabody, and Orbiter. Especially her. Take care of Orbiter for me. She looks up to you, you know? You could be a real great kid, Emily. I know it. You don't need this to survive. You're always living, kid. I mean, look at Orbiter, for God's sakes. Enough about Orbiter! Leave me and take her instead if you're so damn dizzy with her! I'm not! I just think the kid knows what she's doing! Leave! 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 Orbiter! 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 I don't need you! I don't need this! I don't... God! This is what I think of your stupid comic books, Orbiter! I'm so alive, aren't I? I'm so alive! Batman and I are going on a couple's retreat. But we're going to have fun, right? <sighs> yes, dear. I have um uh, my appointment today. You know that guy I've been seeing for my um anger issues. <laughs> Okay, just come back whenever you can. Shoot, there's only one person left I can call. There's a coming soon in my house. Whee! I'm Lady Butterfly, here to sell things, and I fight for justice and really cute wings. Superheroes always need a theme song. Oh, Super Fluffy, put down your lint roller. We've got a school to save. Super what? Just put on your costume. Superheroes always have a sidekick. What? What? No. No. I hate you for this. If you had wanted a different costume, then you should have come with me to the superhero, superhero costume warehouse. I didn't think you'd pick this. How was I supposed to know what you wanted? All you said was pick something in my size. Where did you even find this? The, the lame superheroes who will never make the comic section? Of course not. It was from clearance. Now let's go over the rules of superheroes and sidekicks. One, only I can solve crimes independently. Two, only you can be kidnapped. 
Three, if there's a press conference, only I can answer the questions. Oh, how about no making friends with the villains? Hey, don't be mean to Darth Delta. She's very nice. Plus, I'm not friends with my arch nemesis, Mr. Phlegm. Arch nemesis are an important part to any superhero story. You can hardly call the man a villain. I mean, the only thing he does is spread his cold to people. He makes me sick! Literally. <laughs> can we just go? You're right. We've got a school to save. It's a school for the deaf. She can't hear you. How can you tell? Because it says Coolidge School for the Deaf above the door. Wow! My first distressed citizen is deaf! The neater your citizens are, the better your assignment. As for communicating, we're going to have to try something else. Hola, mi amo, senora butterfly! She, she can't. Go! To. She just told me where the ball is. That's impossible. She doesn't seem to understand English. She can, and she's very intelligent. Uh, maybe she understands African tongue clicking. Are you kidding me? You're right. This is taking too long. I have to go find that bomb. Little girl, I know this is a scary time for you, but never fear. I will save you. I'm sorry. But your school is going to blow up. What is wrong with that woman in the wings? So many things. <laughs> so many things. Inside the school. Now, if I were a bomb, where would I be? Obviously, it can't be anywhere too obvious. That'd make it too easy. I found it. Oh, that's impossible. You're a sidekick. They never do anything important. What? I'm the sidekick? So, so that's why you're always bossing me around? Yes, and that's also why you have to do all my laundry and you can't have a theme song. But you can have a catchphrase. I hate you for this! No, see, it has to be something more compatible for all situations. Think of Scooby-Doo. His catchphrase is Roby Dooby Doo! He can say it whenever he wants and it will always make sense. Well, why couldn't I be the hero? Because I do all the work. I filled out all the forms. I bought the costumes. I used your credit card for the down payment on the fluffy mobile. What? Never mind. The point is I get to be the hero because I do all the work. The point is that you made me sidekick because you want all the glory for yourself. But you can see why. What are you talking about? I want to learn how to do things right. Huh? Superheroes can do everything right. They can fly and talk to people and find bombs. They never mess up. I always mess up. Maybe if I'm the superhero, I'll learn not to mess up. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, why did you have to sign me up with you? I mean, you never asked me if I wanted to do this with you. I did ask you. Really? Hey! Uh -huh. I, I need you. You certainly don't act like it. Oh, are you Mr. Flam? Oh. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. That's... I need you as a mentor. As a what? You're so good at all this stuff. You talked to the deaf girl, you found the bomb. You're superhero material. I need to learn from you. So, so you're going to put the lives of deaf children in my hands 
Just so that you can learn to do things right. The best way to learn is by necessity? They hate you for this! Oh, there's the bomb! Yay! <laughs> now in the movies, they always cut some wire, but they're like... Eight wires. But I'm positive my mentors taught me right. I know nothing about defusing bombs. I, I taught you nothing. Bonding moment. Lady Butterfly, think. Think about what you're doing. Appropriate music. No, no, this is not a good idea. Do not cut that wire. Gazing into each other's Don't eyes. Don't do it. Don't do it. Possible love interest. I thought you were supposed to be dead. Okay, okay no, no, no. And now we just need some scissors. Okay, everyone needs to get out. Out of the building. Go. Go. Uh, Oi! Hulk! Catch! Another one! I haven't talked to her yet. Well, I know it was only one night. Yeah, I, I'm not just gonna blow her off the rest of my life. Yeah, she's been calling me and... You know I don't operate like you. Yeah, whatever. I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right, Tamara. Go over there and play. What do you mean by play? I'm not that simple-minded. I can entertain myself with dirt, you know. Honey, I never said that. Do you want to enjoy this wonderful day? Don't you dare, honey me. Of course I want to enjoy my day. But I don't want to do it with you. Hey there, Pookie Bear. How's my favorite man ever doing? Uh, am I really your, uh, favorite? Well, of course you are, honey bunny. It's been a few days and... I was getting worried. Well, it's it's only been two days. Two days too long! <laughs> oh, aren't kids so cute? I've always wanted to have kids. Have you ever thought about kids? Well, if and when I do have kids, it would have to be with someone that I know well and someone that I've known for a long, long time. Well, thank goodness we have our whole lives ahead of us just to get to know one another then. Look, Sam, I, I wanted to talk to you about the other night. Oh, wasn't it amazing? I've been swimming in an ocean of wonderful. Well, see, here's the thing. Even though last Friday night was really fun, I... Oh, that reminds me. Here, I got you a present. Oh, uh, a present? For, for what? For our three-day anniversary, silly. Oh, uh, you, you shouldn't have. Well, I should have because I love you. <laughs> okay, wow, Sam, I really need to talk to you. What's wrong? Are you upset that you didn't get me a present too? That's okay, you can just take me out to dinner. Uh, Sam, you s things have been moving really fast, and again, Friday night was really nice. It's just, I'm not really looking for a girlfriend right now. Are you doing what I think you're doing? What do you think I'm doing? Because you should not be reacting like this. Well, I mean, I know this is fast and all and that we just met, but screw it. Yes, Lucas. Yes, I will marry you. What? How the hell did you take that as a proposal? 
Well, I mean, you said you didn't want a girlfriend, so that must mean that you want a wife. Oh my God, you idiot. He's breaking up with you. You treat me like a child and tell me what to do, and even I can see what he's doing. You really bought him a three-day anniversary gift? You aren't in first grade anymore. Act your age, you numbskull. You're breaking up with me? We were never even together. Oh, we most certainly were. We spent all of Friday night together. Yes, we physically were together, Sam. I'm just saying that we were never a couple. This was just about sex. I went out on Friday night looking for sex. So I'm just your plaything. As opposed to what, my dream girl? But on Friday night you said we were meant for each other. That's original. <laughs> Look, Sam, it's, it's nothing you did. It's just me. Even I, the naive fourth grader, have heard better excuses than that. Who is she? I'm babysitting her. You brought the child that you're babysitting to visit your random post-bar hookup at the park? Well, what's wrong with that? Now, I know I'm smart for my age, but what's a hookup? Well, it's when two strangers meet and they have- Whoa! Sex. Are you about to explain hooking up to a toddler? I am not a toddler. Fine. Old. Toddler. Look. Whatever, Sam, this was never meant to be anything more than a random Friday night sexcapade. I'm just trying to be nice, and you just make it impossible. Yeah, I understand. Good. But I still want you to have the gift, though. I'm still in awe that you honestly bought me a gift after knowing me for 72 hours. I know. I'm a catch. Anyone is getting assisted in normal daily functions like walking, it's going to be you, Sam. What the hell is wrong with this girl? Mm. On Friday night, I had spaghetti for diner. I had no idea that it would be the last meal that I ever ate alone, wondering what it would be like to be in love. I love you, Lukey Pookie. XOXO, Sam. Come on, Dad, can't you go any faster? Norman's dying. It's okay, Norman. Justin's here. We're gonna take you to the doctors, and they're gonna make you all better. I promise. I still can't believe we're taking a gerbil. Hamster, Dad. He's a hamster. Gerbils have long tails, and hamsters. I can't believe we're taking that rodent to the small animal emergency vet. Do you have any idea how much this is going to cost me, Justin? How can you think about money at a time like this? Norman hasn't eaten for three days, and his breathing is irregular. Do you know what that means, Dad? <laughs> nope, but I bet you'll tell me. Pneumonia, Dad. It means pneumonia. And you know what that means? Death. Norman's only two and a half, and he's barely even lived. But you're tough, aren't you, Norman? Remember when you rolled down the stairs in your hamster ball? You weren't even scared. I know that, because when I brought you back up the stairs, you just did again. Well, maybe that's because it's not that smart. Shh! You know he's sensitive! It's not his fault his, he was born with the brain size of a peanut. You're right. I guess it's not. I'll be more considerate about his feelings next time. Thanks, Dad. And are you sure he can't drive any faster? How much longer? Is this the fastest way? Why is there so much traffic? Yes, son, there's a thing called the speed limit. And I don't know, it depends on the traffic. And this is the only way I know, and there's traffic because people are leaving the game. Remember, the one we, we missed the end of because we're taking your $25 pet to the hospital? Don't be so selfish, Dad. You want me to take you to the hospital if you showed early symptoms of deadly pneumonia, wouldn't you? I guess I would. So, how's the baseball season going? Well, that's a dumb question. You know the answer, you're the coach. Why don't you tell me? I think it would be going better if instead of sitting around reading books about gerbil pneumonia, you actually went out and threw the ball around. You know I'll play ball with you whenever you want, right? I know, I know. Well then, I think we should practice at least once a week. And I think if you really focus this season, then you can... Justin, are you even listening? Mm-hmm. I was saying 
If you focus this season, you'll have a spot on the All-Star team next year. Exactly! Dad, I don't even know if I'm playing next year. <laughs> oh, come on. What do you mean you're not playing next year? Of course you will. You've been in Little League since you could hold a bat. You're a natural. Much better than I was at your age. No, you're not quitting. Your career has just begun. I'm 11, Dad. I don't have a career. And if I do, I don't want to be in baseball. I hate baseball. I hate how you run the same circle and think it'll get funner. I hate how you did one play in the outfield, if you're lucky, and then just stand in the sun for the rest of the inner. I hate how bad the battered helmet smells. I hate baseball. I hate it. I really do. You never told me that before. I didn't want you to be disappointed. You love baseball, and I just... No, son. I loved you. I enjoy baseball. There's a difference, you see? I see. So you aren't mad? No, I guess I'm kind of sad. Why, Dad? Because... It's the end of something. But sometimes we need to have endings to have other beginnings, right? Yeah, I guess so. Let's just remember that when we talk to Norman's doctor today. And we're never going to forget all the fun we had in Little League, just like we won't forget all the fun we had with Norman. Ella, the, the door was open. I, uh, oh, don't worry about it. I was just sort of used to walking in. Old habits are hard to break, I guess. Uh, yeah, like I said, don't worry about it. Right. Oh, so, so how are you? I'm uh, all right. I mean, I could always be better, but uh, yeah, I could always be better. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. I've missed you. What? I've Stop. missed you. Don't you dare say that to me. That I've missed you? Yes. But... You've come back for it, right? What? You've come to take your heart back, right? Ella. That's what you've come back to do, right? Yes. So why would you go and say something like that to me? I don't know. Can't it be true? It can be true. You, you just can't say it aloud. Why? Because it makes me think that you still care about me, and that's not fair, and that's not true. I'm sorry. Whatever. Okay, uh, but... Uh, stop apologizing. Ella, I... No, there's nothing to apologize for anymore. So you forgive me? I didn't say that. But one day? Is that it? My heart, sitting over there? Yeah. On the ground? Yeah. Well, that's reassuring. What are you talking about? What's the worst that could happen to it? I don't know, you could like, step on it or something. Anders, I'm not going to step on your heart. But it's sitting on the ground. Yes, it is, and I just put it there for a second. I promise you, I kept it safe as well as I could. Thanks, I, I appreciate it. You're welcome. So, can I have it back now? I, I sort of feel oh, bad about yeah, um, having you have it when... Yeah. Uh, so, In, can, can I have it? Yeah. In a second. Um, who are you going to give it to next? Huh? I mean, it's just that it's sat on my bedside table for the longest time. I guess I just sort of want to know where it'll be heading next. Oh, yeah. I guess it'll be going to... Patricia. So that's her name. Yeah, and, and she's a really nice person. She's sweet and she's caring. And she volunteers at animal and shelters. And helps on guys weekends. cheat on their girlfriends. Please don't say it like that. How would you prefer that I said it? I don't know. Don't blame all this mess on her. Oh, I'm not. She didn't know. Right. Why are you being like that? Oh, I don't know. It's not like my ex boyfriend who cheated on me is just standing here 
telling me how wonderful the woman he cheated on me with is. I'm sorry. Why did you do it? Why? Yes. <laughs> Why? And not just another silly excuse you fed me when we broke up. I just, I want to know. It'll make me feel better. Was this just a sudden impulse you felt like acting on, or was this something you'd thought about for months? It just, I mean, it just sort of happened. I never thought I would. I'm not that kind of guy. I, I didn't plan on it. Fine, that's fine. Just give me mine back then. What? Mine, my heart. That's how these things work. I give you yours back, I get mine. Um, well. Andrews. Now. Well, I, I can't. What do you mean you can't? Patricia and I were at my flat. And we both had a little bit too much to drink, and we were, well, you know. That's disgusting. Well, we were. And it was sitting on my bedside table, and it wasn't looking where I was going. And when I got up, I, it. What are you trying to tell me? I knocked it off. And it shattered. You broke my heart. I didn't mean to. Ella. I trusted you. Ella. I, I trusted you! I know. I know. This is this is all my fault. I, I take I take full responsibility for this, but but if there was any way I could make it up to you, you know I would. I'm not a bad guy. I don't, I don't do this kind of thing normally. I mean, well, well, okay, but, but it'll never happen again. Well, I guess it can. It's, it's why we've broken up. But, but there were other reasons too, right? And, and maybe it's a good thing. Maybe this is what had to happen so we could both move on with our lives. Just a thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's so funny? You. Me? Ella, I'm just trying to apologize. <gasps> apologize? Apologize? That, that's hilarious. I don't get it. You wouldn't. Maybe, maybe it's irony. Maybe that's what's so funny. Your, your weak, sad, ridiculous attempt at an apology compared to cheating on your girlfriend. Yes, it's cheating. It doesn't matter what you call it. It doesn't make it any better. It doesn't change what you did, Anders. You slept with another woman. You put your dirty tongue down Patricia's throat. And you think that a pathetic little apology is going to make up for that. That, that enormous pile of shit that you dumped on our relationship, that it's going to vanish into thin air and with the help of a little pixie dust, will fly off into never, never OK, land. OK, fine. I'm just trying You're to just trying to guilt trip me. What? I know what you're doing. You always do this. Guilt you guilt trip you. And just, I'm just stating the truth. OK. OK, fine. Let's just calm down and be reasonable about this. No. No? No. That's what I said. No. You're not going to be reasonable about so this. So what? You just want to throw a tantrum? Sit and cry? Get it all out? OK, fine. That works. A tantrum? You think this is overreacting? I didn't say that. But yes. We were together for three years. Yes, I know. Three years of my life I wasted caring about you, which I have just found out is a disgusting bag of garbage. You don't think that's something I should be upset about? Yes. Yes, it is. You're right. I'm sorry. <gasps> OK, what do you want me to say then, huh? What? Because if I could go back in time and stop myself from ever running into Patricia that one day in the elevator, I would, OK? I would. But I can't. Bravo. What a noble gesture. Stop it. I just want my heart back. That's all I came here for. Your heart? 
Yes. My heart. Can I have it back? Okay. They don't look that fragile, do they? Hidden away in boxes and far from reach. Like mine was, so safe, so... Why do we do it? Why do we go and just hand it over? How can we ever trust another human being with something so precious? It's amazing. Ella? Amazing. How stupid people can be. Catch! How could you? An eye for an eye. But... Get out. Susie Collins is about to make Marvel's champion history. Don't let that data sweat fool you, folks. She's in total control. She just might go off the... Can it, Miles? Hey now, hey now. I'm just trying to ease the tension. You've been staring at that marble for like 10 minutes, and I needed to get the ball rolling somehow. More like get the marble rolling somehow. <laughs> Stop it, you goons. I said you guys could watch me if you were quiet. But you aren't being quiet. You're being the opposite of quiet. You're being not quiet. So please, let me get back to my practice session. You guys can still watch, but you have to zip it. Yeesh. You sure are into this marble thing. I think it's inspiring how determined you are to achieve greatness, Susie. You know, Shakespeare once said, some are born great. Some achieve greatness. Others have greatness thrust upon them. If you quote that Shakespeare guy one more time, I'm gonna thrust my fist onto your face. Oh, hop off. I think it's cool Susie's trying to play marbles. Shouldn't she be playing with, like, dolls or bras or something? Miles, I can hear you. How about you go play with bras or dolls? Joke's on you. I already play with bras. Ew. What do you mean you play with bras? I... I use my sister's bra as like this double duty slingshot thing. It works really well, supports the ammo like a dream. Uh, this is not being quiet. Sorry, Sorry, Susie. It's okay, just hush it. Just be like my sister's bra and support me now, will you? Oh, damn it. <gasps> Shh, don't let Miss Perkins hear you say that. You get sent to the principal's office. Let her hear my curse words of frustration. This is impossible. I'm never going to win. How can you win if you're playing by yourself? It's... <sighs> okay. I'm going to tell you guys something, because we're like the three amigas. Amigos. <laughs> we aren't girls. Debatable. Anyway, you have to promise you won't tell anyone. Promise? Yeah, cross my heart. It's not enough. We have to do the handshake. Eat spinach. Friends don't let friends act like a bitch. Friends will love you even if you're a nerd. Friends will never go back on their word. Buddies! <sighs> so what's the secret? Yeah, last time we did that handshake was when Lenny's parents gave him the talk about the birds and the bees. <sighs> so what's the secret? Lenny, Miles, I, Susie Collins, and above! What? Gross! You can't tell anyone! Not even your teddy bear, Miles! Not even stuck. Aw, oh, shoot, child. I gave that stupid baby toy away back in the second grade. 
Whatever. You can't tell a soul. But, but, who is it? You keep a secret? Yeah, but we're not doing the handshake again. We got looks from the last time we did it. It's Brad. Brad? Brad Stein? Yes? Why are you like Brad? He's such a weenie. What are you talking about? He's the most popular boy in the fifth grade. Susie's right, Lenny. Brad, he's a stud. He's got Peelies. He's never fallen off him, not once. And he's got flames on him, too. You know what having flames on your Heelys means? What? Having flames on your Heelys, it's having... It's like having a black belt in karate. It means you're fierce. Oh, he sure is fierce. This is crap. You dislike him because he has a pool in his backyard. I am not that shallow, Lenny. Although that is a nice bonus. <laughs> Lenny, why do you care so much that Susie likes bread? I don't care. You care. What? <laughs> okay, whatever. Susie, I get it. Brad, he's a cool guy, but how does marbles have anything to do with this? Well, I was talking to Gretchen, and she said Brad really likes girls who are good at marbles. That's such a stupid trait to like. So I'm practicing marbles here the other day. I was wearing my good dress, I was hoping Brad would notice me, and he totally did. But stupid face Fiona was following him like always. So she said, I am so much better than you at playing marbles. And deep down I was like, you're probably right. But Brad was with her, so I was like, nah, uh and she was like, uh-huh. And I was like, nah, uh and she was like, mm-hmm. Anyway, that went on for a while. Finally, my face was getting those red splotchy patches I get when I'm mad. You know those ones. I've seen those splotches, and I've seen what's shortly to come thereafter. You do not want to see those splotches. Continue. Well, my face was red as, was red as a tomato, so I yelled, want to go? And she said, yeah, right here, right now, bring it. Then what happened? I froze. I told her I hadn't eaten a healthy breakfast, therefore would not be able to change her right then and there. So we looked at our assignment notebooks and found today to be most suitable for a marble battle. Do you think you're ready? <gasps> no. Have you been watching me play for the past 10 minutes? I tank. How is Brad ever going to like me? Oh, Susie. Brad would be stupid not to like you just because you suck at marbles. Thanks a lot, Lenny. Really. Why is it always the hopeless romantics get the short end of the stick? What? Uh, <clears throat> nothing. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Susie. Now how can we help you win your battle against Fiona? Well, you can start by teaching me how to play marbles. You don't even know how to play? That's correct. If I'm being honest, I think marbles are kind of stupid, but I just like the way they shine in the sun. And look, these ones have the golden rule written on them. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Then shouldn't you treat Fiona nicely and let her go out with Brad? Shut up, Lenny. No one asked you. So much for the golden rule. <clears throat> All right, Susie, here's what to do. So you've got your circle thing, and you've got your big shooter thing. And you try to shoot these things out of the thing, like the big circle thing, and then if you keep it in the thing, then you get to go again. And then you try to knock out the things out of the thing Are again. Are you even speaking English? It wasn't that hard to understand. Was it, Lenny? I'm staying out of this because clearly nothing I say or do is going to benefit Susie right now. Lenny, stop being so dramatic and come teach me how to play. You know you're the best at marbles in the whole school. Everyone worships your skills. Please come teach me how to play. Why? So you can run off with Brad and he can teach you how to just give you underdog pushes on the swings? Yes, that's exactly how you should. I can see it now. He'll be giving you underdog pushes. But he doesn't deserve to give you underdog pushes. I do! Brad can't even spell his own name, let alone the word marble. Don't you want someone who can give you more than that? Intelligent conversations about how cursive is a dying art? Someone who knows all the state's capitals? Oh, wouldn't that be nice, Susie? Why do you care so much that Susie likes Brad? Why are you so defensive of Wait a minute. 
Oh my god, you like... Libby! Miles, stop! You don't do anything to Christmas! Oh, hello, Fiona! What are you... I hope you're doing well today. I see you at a baseball cap, you ensemble. It's very nice. Brad, hello! How are you doing today? I'm good, Susie. Thanks. Good is what one feels. Well is what one is, you moron! Yeah, I mean, what are you doing? Defending my honor! Well, stop! You're ruining this! Hey, Susie, are we gonna play marbles or not? Uh, uh, of course we are! Just give me one second! I need to talk to my trainer and advisors first! Loser. Okay, guys, this is it. I've been training for the past 48 hours in my young life at this very moment. Now, my attempt is probably gonna be bad. In fact, it is almost certain that I will lose today. But it doesn't matter because, you know, Brad will never like me. Fiona will always be able to make fun of me, but it doesn't matter because I will try. Yes, I will. And thank you guys for supporting me. I'm sorry if I get snappy sometimes. You know, that stock you learned on the health field trip is all too real. I think that all I... All right, all right. This conversation went from sad to happy to gross. Just go in there and kick her marble flat. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> Susie? Oh, yes, Lenny? No, want to know a trick at winning a game of marbles every time? Of course I do! That's all it takes. I can't believe I didn't think of that before! Lenny, you're a genius! But why would you tell me your secret? Now that I'm gonna win, Brad will like me and you hate Brad. Well, yeah, I do. But do you like Brad? Duh! Does he make you happy? Yes. It makes me so dizzy like I've been on a moving merry-go-round for a million years. Yeah, I know that feeling. It's a weird feeling, but it's a cool one. So if winning this means you stay on that merry-go-round of love, then I want you to stay there. It's really nice of you, Lenny. You know, sometimes I think you're like a 17-year-old man trapped in a fifth-grader's body. So I've been told. <laughs> now go out there and make Fiona wish she had never accepted your challenge. All right. I am ready to turn your smiley face marbles into frowny ones, Fiona. Doubtful. You and your stupid dollar store marbles. These ones are from Norway, so you know they're the best of the best. Crap. Norway is known for their craftsmanship. You got this, Susie. <sighs> okay, let's go. Okay, ready, set, go! Do the trick! So, uh, Susie, I'm having a pool party tomorrow. Would you like to come? I'd love to. Would it be okay if my friends came too? Ah, uh, sorry, sweetheart. But if you're gonna be rolling with me, you gotta ditch these clowns. Who are you calling a clown, dope? No offense. It's just, Miles, you're a scrub. Offensive dope. And Lenny, you have a book hanging out of your pocket. Who reads for fun? <laughs> Losers. Sorry, juniors, you just can't hang. Juniors? I'm older than you by four months. And shorter by about four months, too. That doesn't even make sense. You don't even make sense. Oh. You guys, stop it! Shut up, Susie. What did you just say to you her? Heard me? You bet I did. <gasps> what was that for? That's for telling the most amazing girl in this school to shut up! No one gets to tell her that except me and Miles because we're her best friends and we love her more than anything! <laughs> I'm out of here, man. You guys have fun being nerdy best friends. And Susie, you can forget about coming to my pool party. I don't care if you rock at marbles. It's a shame. I was even going to ask you to be my partner in chicken. But you can forget it now! Did he just fall up his heelys? Are you okay, Susie? Gross! Why'd you do that? It was payback for teaching me your secret marble trick. And for sticking up for me. And for making Brad fall off his heelys. It shattered my illusion of his dreaminess. Plus, 
Miles wrote that you like me in the wet sand. Miles! You're welcome. So, wanna play marbles? Well, sure. But you're gonna have to go easy on me. You are the marbles champ, after all. I learned from the best. All right, all this cuteness is making me sick. Tomorrow, we're going back to playing Cherry Cherry. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.